pharmacy. I asked the lady about it, and she, she and anytime you look at it, it looks awful, but it actually started looking a lot better than how it was, and I resisted scratching it, although that's hard to do. And when she saw it, she said, I think you need to go get on some antibiotics and, um, and steroids for this. So she sent me to the Walgreens clinic, and they actually gave me some. But um, I'm always having this, I'm, I'm saying all that to say, I got on the steroids to try to help that heal, although I thought it was doing a lot better. But I have a hip problem and knee and joint problems sometimes. And those steroids really have relieved a lot of pain. You know, and I've been able to do some things that um, I hadn't been able to do in a long time. So I've been a very unique comfort level just because I was on that for, for another reason. <clears throat> uh, all right, Dr. Hello, Dr. Haney. You were once some, uh, had like some kind of high or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. I don't know, but the stuff made me feel so weak. Oh, y'all did it? I wake up wow. Yeah. Okay. Good to see you. All righty. Good seeing you. So I know you Good wouldn't remember. I saw one of your students yesterday from uh, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Her name is Larisha. You probably wouldn't remember. I know you had so many. Larisha. Larisha. She's from here, but. From yeah, she's from Nashville. Now, how did you see? I, mean, what, what I don't know. I, I, out the blue, two of them, when they were my students, who, they called and said, hey, let's meet at the Y and work, do a workout. When can we work out? Okay. So I met them down. I just mentioned, I said, yeah, uh -huh. I'm going to be on a program tomorrow. Dr. Haney. Dr. Haney? Uh -huh. Yeah, I had him in my class. They said, yeah, he was a hard teacher. <laughs> yeah, <I> said, <laughs> but, but it was something that she said that you told when she was a freshman, sophomore, uh -huh. about getting an insurance policy. Uh -huh. And she said, I remember that. And she said she did it. She <laughs> And I never read it. Dr. Haney okay, told us to do that. All right. Well, let's see now. This is, this is our, uh, uh, this is the, uh, let's see, uh, who, uh, mass communications and a personal uh, de human development. Mass yeah, yeah. Is that, that the, the impact? Yeah, of mass yeah, yeah. Impact on of mass communication on personal. Uh, person, human, yeah, personality person, and human development. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. I sort of got that down in. Yeah, it seemed like your, yeah. your granddaughter touched on some of that uh -huh. too. Um, impact of mass communications on uh, personal and human development. Okay. okay, very good. And you ready to deal with that? I'm ready. Okay, very good. This is the last show. That we now, I know your, your granddaughter's happy. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there for five shows. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the impact of mass communications on personal and human development. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the impact of mass communications on personal uh, development, uh, Dr. E.K. Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University. And of course, Dr. Sanford, let me welcome you to the show this morning. And I think our audience uh, will know you because you've been with us on so many, many occasions. But just the same, there might be that one or two individuals who might not know you. And so let's take this opportunity to give you an, uh, give you an opportunity to uh, give us some information in reference to your background, uh, your uh, experiences, and some of the things that you found to be important in your life. And then we can get into the impact of uh, mass communications on uh, personal and human development. And thank you again for having me. I am Dr. E. Kelly Sanford. I'm a professor of sociology at Tennessee State University. And I knew you as you were a professor there, and I've been there now about 20 years. I did my postdoc degree at the Penn State University in, it was the NIMH, National Institute of Mental Health Fellowship. And I was dealing with gerontology there, studying the aging process. And I taught there as well. And from there, I went to the University of Montana in Missoula, Montana, where I was director of African American Studies. And I was there for about six years. 
a position came open then at that time to be the department chairperson at Austin Peay State University, mm -hmm. where I went there and stayed for a few years and felt very fortunate to be able to have a position mm -hmm. that I went to at Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. I did my um, doctorate degree at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Very fortunate to be there, and I dealt with the homeless elderly mm -hmm. on my dissertation topic while I was there, as well as worked with the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, mm -hmm. as well as a very important project while I was there with the D.C. Superior Court on mediation programs, mm -hmm. and that was a very wonderful experience. I would also like to say, since we're dealing with mass communication today, I was also in radio um, mm. um, program while I was there. I ran a talk show program overnight while mm. I was in that area. Mm -hmm. But I want to view, move very briefly to say, while I was working on my master's degree in reference to what our topic is today, I had a course at University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill under Dr. Gerard Linsky. Mm -hmm. He was a two-time president of the American Sociological Association, and his entire research was related to human development, mm -hmm. looking at phenomena from an earlier period to the present, which I'm hoping to touch on today. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, uh, what we do, what we have to do here is that we'll take our first commercial break in a couple of minutes, <clears throat> and then we'll be able to get into mass communications. <clears throat> but uh, what uh, really... Uh, would you say in reference to mass communications and personal development, what really inspired you to uh, want to talk about something like yes. that? Well, you know, it's, it's horrific that so in coincidental that things happen in our world today that we're so impacted mm -hmm. by mass media, um, technology, telecommunication, mm -hmm. that individuals that are in cyberspace, on Facebook, mm -hmm. or how they're getting there and receiving their information is impacting their thinking processes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they might come to some conclusion to act out in a certain way based on the impact of some type of form of technology. So I had that interest as you um, contacted me about a topic today, that, given the horrific issue that happened in Orlando, and I know we may be dated, but mm -hmm. one of the worst problems of mass killings that has happened in the United States of America, and then what is influencing people to go out and to act in those types mm -hmm. of ways? So I thought in, in terms of understanding how is mass communication can be very positive within our postmodernist society in which we're living in today, but there are also a lot of negative types of problems that goes along with the development of mass communication, telecommunication, computer, um, being able to have information so rapid that that's flowing in our society today. And so in other words, what we're saying here is that uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and all yes. of these uh, uh, sites Websites have quite a bit to do with our own personal human development. Is Absolutely. That yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and, and how we can, even more than that, mm -hmm. be influenced by it. Mm -hmm. How we might come up within a, the, the structure of a family that is very positive. Mm -hmm. We may come up within a structure of religion that is very positive. Mm -hmm. But the influence of the institution of, of mass communication can influence those two other institutions to the point that a person may make a decision mm -hmm. to do something that is deviant or mm -hmm. incorrect. Even though he, his upbringing might have been somewhat different, Absolutely. but since he became involved in that kind of activity, it, the results might be different than uh, anticipated. Is that Absolutely. what we're saying? Absolutely. That's exactly what okay. we're saying. And so what we'll do, we'll uh, have our first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very <laughs> short commercial break. Yeah. I had a little, I was cleaning out the yard and got a little um, poison ivy on my arm. Oh, man. And you know how that impacted. <coughs> it just in a small area, mm -hmm. pulsed up and did the whole thing. And, you know, coming back from our time, we just had these home rooms. And it was working. Oh, I yeah. About four mm -hmm. or five days, it was itching. I didn't itch it in there. I knew that was wrong thing. Uh huh. But then as it, um, Fourth day went by, I just went up to the pharmacy and asked the lady. She said, oh, you know, it looked bad. Mm -hmm. But it looked worse mm -hmm. at the beginning than it did at that point. Mm -hmm. I thought it was getting better. Mm -hmm. 
So she put me on some antibiotics and steroids. And I'm on today and tomorrow is my last day of the steroid. But I was telling this gentleman here how being on the steroids mm -hmm. had another impact on my hip. Mm -hmm. It did. It, it mm -hmm. is. It's working with that made me feel like I'm I can make a comeback. I've well, been you know, feeling I'm, good, but I hate to stay on medicine. Though. <laughs> they want me to replace it, but I don't want to do that mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Steroids, what, 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 you yeah. take them as a pill? Or you just what? have to take them as a pill. You mm -hmm. take it in different ways. They gave it to me as a mm -hmm. pill. I mm -hmm. started off taking six for four days and went down to five, mm -hmm. four, three, two. Now I'm on one. Now what does it do morning. for you? Well, it does a lot of things. This was just to heal that mm -hmm. swelling. Mm -hmm. It was helping to boost your mm -hmm. whatever in your system to help things to heal, but it also takes away inflammation. Okay, it does a lot of things. <clears throat> That's what I was wondering. What, mm -hmm. what was it doing? It did multiple things. Mm -hmm. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E. Kelly Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University and the topic is the impact of mass communications on personal and human development. Now, Doctor, let's see if we can pick up during this second segment on uh, some of the uh, ideas dealing with the impact of uh, mass communications on social and, I mean, on political and uh, personal and human development. I'll get it right. Yeah, yeah. go on, let's see. Well, that's right. Yes, what I would like to be able to try to contextualize it is to say that we live in a society that is basically made up of 10 basic institutions, and mm -hmm. on this show I mentioned them before. Mm -hmm. So the 10th one, as we have moved from pre-industrial to post-industrial to mm -hmm. post-modernist age mm -hmm. into this highly telecommunication society mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So things are just d different within even in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result of that, there's been some impact on all of us that have experienced mm -hmm. that development from one period to the next period. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result of that development, how has that impacted us mm -hmm. and our personalities? How has it impact, impacted our needs? Mm -hmm. How do we feel if, if we don't have our cell phones with us? All right. How do you uh -huh. feel when you're on Facebook or on mm -hmm. Twitter, as you mentioned earlier? If you can't has, get on that all the time. And that's yeah, right. Very yeah, good. yeah, you feel. Mm -hmm. if, if you get a sense that, oh, where's my cell phone? You feel lost. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or you might make a decision to go back home and get it versus being on time for wherever you have to go. Mm -hmm. So how has just mass communication, development of telecommunication impacted mm -hmm. our personalities? Mm -hmm. Another little behavioral difference, if you think about how laws have had to change, an institution of the law, prior to cell phones, there was no such thing as texting. Mm -hmm. Now that we are doing that, how has mass communication made a person feel that is driving in a car, mm -hmm. that feels a buzz, that they need to respond to it. Mm -hmm. And when they responding to it, then they we've had a number of deaths based on Good. people mm -hmm. driving and texting. Mm -hmm. So now laws are coming, making it illegal not to text and drive, or warning signs mm -hmm. posted not to not to text and drive. So I'm saying that to just to say some little elementary behavioral change just because of the development of mass communication, telecommunication. So when we look at other impacts, say from a child's point of view, okay. um, to what degree will families be very much involved in child development from the sensory motor stage from birth to age two, just in human interaction versus telecommunication? Mm -hmm. What would be the impact of a group that is spending time reading well, with all of the senses of the child and helping them to develop, to grow, to develop, to go into kindergarten versus where well, we're living in a telecommunication society, they are very much involved with them, but they are letting them watch videos. They hand them the hand telephone, them the the telephone video. Uh -huh. and they are playing with it. Mm -hmm. And that's, they are getting that type of stimulation versus a human interaction mm -hmm. as we would have had when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. Now, we can look at this when we mentioned in the topic, the development of human societies. If we go to another country, as our president of the United States visited Cuba mm -hmm. very recently, Good. you will see people over there walking around socially interacting. Mm -hmm. And since they do not have the telecommunication system that we have mm -hmm. here in this highly industrialized mm -hmm. 
competitive environment and, and, and market mm -hmm. that we live here in America, you see much more human interaction. You probably will not find some of the same symptoms that mm -hmm. we will have because they don't have that. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the positive things about not having mm -hmm. access to it. While indeed we have it and, and there are a lot of negative things that mm -hmm. come from it. It creates now, a lot of problems for, problem. but <clears throat> because of our ability to, to deal with some of these things. Is that absolutely, mm -hmm. from the classroom to um, human development mm -hmm. and also societies. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this issue that we have when we look at some of the issues and concerns and problems mm -hmm. that we have in society. Of course, telecommunication is here, it's here to stay. It is, it, it is fastly growing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you learn one thing, it's already outdated and the new one mm -hmm. is already out. Mm -hmm. They're developing right now something new. But what is the impact of that on personality development? Mm -hmm. Our need, being at the table, um, for dinner with a family? Will everyone have the phones Phone. out? <clears throat> or do they miss the whole communication and interaction mm -hmm. between each other? How has that impacted us? Now, when we've had earlier shows and talked about deviant behavior, mm -hmm. how has something like that, taking a person that's by themselves and they are following some other type of a deviant mm -hmm. type of communication on Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. or, or Instagram, or whatever they are doing, and they are being influenced by that. They are, are changing their patterns of behavior is to do deviant things mm -hmm. that would not follow the rules and regulations of the law, and they will go out and act on it. Mm -hmm. So this is impacting us in a, in a certain way. So while there are some positive things about it, of course, it's here to stay, mm -hmm. and it's going to even develop um, in a, to a higher degree, um, and we don't even know where it's going. So there are some positive things about it. But um, we also have to be very concerned about some of the negative things about it as well. You know, I was thinking, <coughs> Dr. Sanford, that uh, in view of what happened in Orlando yes. recently, uh, would you say that uh, the mass communications, mm -hmm. our ability to communicate, uh, and et cetera, had something to do with this one way or the other? And if so, from a sociological point of view, how would you evaluate that? Absolutely, because we do live in a nation of laws and our institutions are supposed to guide our behaviors. Mm -hmm. There are certain rules and regulations and laws. However, given mass communication, telecommunication, how can a person then go online, mm -hmm. place in an order for something, there are certain minimal balances of checks and balances, mm -hmm. and then that person can then receive whatever they have ordered mm -hmm. very rapidly. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this particular circumstance, with anything that someone wants, they can go out there and they can get some feedback on it very quickly, and then they can go and act on it. Because we have advanced and everything has become so quick and rapid, mm -hmm. so it has indeed had a negative impact on our society with criminal behavior. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so many people are buying into yes. uh, social media and whatever. As yes. a matter of mm -hmm. fact, it's almost unusual for a person not to be involved in mm -hmm. social media, media one way or the other. Is that what Absolutely, it? it is. And mm -hmm. then we're all involved. I think the question becomes to what degree are we involved? Mm -hmm. We're already at a high level, and then others are at an even higher level. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this incident of the Orlando or any other setting that comes up where people are involved in deviant behavior, even in other countries, mm -hmm. many instances, they are not talking to the person directly and being influenced by them mm -hmm. by being a part of that group. They are just through cyberspace mm -hmm. communicating with them, watching it on the Facebook.